In the next chapter, we're going to turn to the Americas and their discovery by Europeans. The backstory of this discovery and colonization process is what's called the Reconquista, which is a centuries-long effort by the Portuguese and the Spanish to push the Muslims, who they called the Moors, back to Africa. Muslims had taken over most of the Iberian Peninsula beginning in 711. The Reconquista that was begun by Christian nobles in northern Spain took about 800 years to complete. The Portuguese Christians reconquered slightly more quickly because Portugal doesn't extend as far into the south and the Spanish kings and princes had to contend with fortified cities like Sevilla and Granada. However, Portugal was also a maritime nation and it captured Coita, a Moroccan fortress in North Africa in 1415. And this gave the Portuguese control over the Western Mediterranean and the Atlantic coast of Africa. After a brief but successful war with Castile, which was the principal kingdom of central Spain, Portugal turned its attention to exploring and acquiring territory along the African coast in the 1430s and 1440s under the direction of a man called Prince Henry the Navigator. He was a younger son of the king. His older brother, Edward, became king when their father died of the plague. The Portuguese were becoming merchants and traders, while the Christian Spanish were still fighting the Muslims. Portuguese mariners, following the route established by Bartolomeo Diaz and Vasco da Gama in 1488 and 1497, began sailing to Asia around the bottom of Africa. They conquered coastal East African city-states, they established colonies in Angola on the western side and Mozambique on the eastern side of Africa. They took advantage of a slave trading network that provided possibly 10 million captives for Muslim slave auctions from the 9th century to the 20th. Portuguese control over the African coast was one of the reasons that the royal court in Lisbon showed very little interest in Columbus's proposal to sail west across the Atlantic to India. It's also why the Spanish were eager to take Columbus up on his plan to cross the Atlantic in search of a new route to Asia. We'll return to Spain's interest in Columbus in the next chapter. As I mentioned before, in the wake of the Black Death, peasants and artisans realized that their labor was more valuable than it had been before, and they started demanding and receiving better pay, and this led to increased commercial activity in Europe in the late 1300s, which included not only the important Mediterranean trade that was dominated by the Italian merchants, but also in the Baltic and across the English Channel. However, economic expansion was limited by the availability of gold and silver coins, which had been used in exchange since the 6th century BCE in Greece and Persia. Portuguese merchants were interested in developing this route around Africa to Asia for the trade in spice and in silks. They were pleased to find trade in sub-Saharan Africa as well. The story of the enormous gold reserves of the King Mansa Musa, the Muslim ruler of Mali, were well known to Europeans, especially after he spent enormous amounts of gold in the Middle East during his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1327. Everywhere Mansa Musa went during this pilgrimage, the economies of the places were exploded by this influx of gold and suffered from inflation and other dislocations. The Portuguese began inquiring about the availability of gold in every contact that they made in their explorations, and they weren't disappointed. Present-day Ghana in West Africa was known as the Gold Coast by European traders and imperialists all the way until its independence in 1957 and it is still second only to South Africa in gold production on the African continent. African gold certainly aided in economic exchange in Europe, but it wasn't enough. As we'll see in the next chapter, the search for gold was an important motivation for the exploration and the conquest and the colonization of the Americas by the Spanish and the Portuguese. The Portuguese established the first European colony in sub-Saharan Africa, which they called Angola, in 1575, south of the powerful Congo Kingdom on the West African coast. The Congolese royal family had converted to Christianity 
and their ruler, Afonso I, tried to negotiate as a peer with the rulers of Portugal. King Afonso was not able to prevent Portuguese slave traders from indiscriminately taking people and taking many people of higher social status from his kingdom as slaves. Generally, only criminals and war captives were sold to foreign slave traders, not the sons of noblemen and the king's relatives. It's unclear whether King Afonso tried to ban all trade in slaves or whether he compromised to avoid antagonizing his European allies. Either way, his ban was ineffective and the Portuguese carried off more and more slaves to their sugar plantations, first on the African coast and then later in Brazil. So a couple of questions before I move on. First, why did Portugal complete its Reconquista earlier than Spain? And then secondly, how did a lack of gold and silver slow economic growth in Europe?